Hi everyone, thank you so much for being here. Before we begin, please make sure that you take a second to follow my alternative media channels. They are linked in the description below, just in case. As we appear to be slowly inching closer to a World War III scenario and there is a new geopolitical escalation virtually every single week, you would agree if you follow the news, insurance and reinsurance companies are now pricing in incredible skyrocketing risk premiums. In a recent report, one of the biggest in its industry, an insurance agency Lloyds of London, reported that geopolitical conflict scenario sees global economy exposed to 14.5 trillion with a T trillion dollar loss. When we talk about an economic loss of that magnitude, it is something that will drag down dozens of economies across the globe possibly affecting their poverty levels, their food supply, you name it. Lloyd's of London is the world's leading marketplace for insurance and reinsurance. They believe that there is now a high probability of the global economy being exposed to losses of nearly $15 trillion over a five-year period from the threat of a hypothetical geopolitical conflict. This would cause widespread, meaning on a global scale, disruption to trade and to supply chains. Lloyds now reports that a major geopolitical conflict with multiple participants is not a remote possibility, not anymore, it is now a systemic risk. They now consider it to be a systemic risk, and that is a scary, scary part of this. The report states, with more than 80% of the world's imports and exports, around 11 billion tons of goods at sea at any given time, the closure of major trade routes due to a geopolitical conflict is one of the greatest threats to the resources needed for a resilient economy. They are estimating that the severity of the loss would depend on how badly infrastructure is damaged and the need to realign global trade networks due to the enforcement of sanctions and compromised shipping lines using their own terminology. Europe, for example, which is heavily reliant upon other industrially advanced states for supplies like semiconductors for cars and electronic manufacturing, could stand to lose up to $3.4 trillion. Is Europe now in a position economically, financially, and even politically with that divide growing wider and wider to risk that type of damage? is already dealing with massive, truly massive deterioration in its living conditions and its major economies, not only Germany at this point, but also France and the UK, are contracting and they have been for several quarters, at least quarters in a row. Nevertheless, there is escalatory rhetoric every single day and there's no end in sight. What's worse, arguably, is that the elite wouldn't be directly impacted by these losses. It is an average consumer, a person who's working a 9-to-5 job that would have to figure out how to make ends meet. Speaking of geopolitical conflicts, I want to focus on our supply chains because if you're not directly in the conflict zone, you're going to be likely affected either way and most likely it will be through high prices, lack of certain products, among other things of course. Lloyds here says, the stakes are very high indeed. Many of the world's key shipping gateways control access to high concentrations of vital resources. And the ability to control or to deny access to these critical parts of the supply chain can be a key weapon in the arsenal of governments willing to exert pressure on opponents or other nations. So this would be similar to economic sanctions that the United States allows to impose on any country, absolutely any country that is not aligned with it politically. Economic sanctions are a tool to coerce other states into doing what they otherwise would not do because it directly conflicts with their national interest. 
Here, Lois is emphasizing that other countries are likely to do the same thing that the United States has been doing for decades to the extent of their own abilities. So, for instance, if there is a major escalation in the Middle East, we do need to keep in mind that the global choke point, the Strait of Hormuz, I've mentioned this many, many times before, it might not be an available route to all or to a certain group of vessels. To quantify what I just said, cutting access to just one of those routes could throttle up to 80% of one nation's imports and energy. Energy is going to be key if there were to be a significant disruption to just a handful of shipping's main choke points, several trillion dollars of trade value and business interruption costs would be at stake. Now, you're probably wondering, what are the major shipping routes to be aware of? I put together a quick list for you. Here's the list of the top ones that you really need to be aware of. The first one, of course, is the Strait of Hormuz. This is a key choke point for both energy and goods shipping, with 20 to 30% of the world's oil trade passing through. The next one is the Strait of Malacca and Taiwan. This is extremely important. The Strait of Malacca is the shortest shipping route between East Asia and Europe and the Middle East. And 40% of the world's container fleet passes through the Strait of Taiwan. 40% of the world's container fleet. Just think about the impact if this were to be disrupted. The Suez Canal is up next. This is a key location in the global trade of goods and commodities. The Suez Canal also is highly, highly dependent on the access granted to the Red Sea by the Strait of Bab el Mandeb, which I will talk about in just a minute. Next up is the Panama Canal. This is a key location in the global trade of goods and commodities. And Bab el Mandeb is a vital choke point that can connects the Red Sea and Arabian Sea to the Indian Ocean. It is so important to mention here that the cost of insurance and reinsurance is likely going to go up through the roof across the board, specifically for cargo transport. In turn, it may lead to higher prices on imported goods here in the United States as well as in Europe, precisely because it is now officially, and insurance companies are incorporating this as a systemic risk, it is now riskier to deliver these goods from certain areas to you. So that is one of the key takeaways from this report published by Lloyds that I want you to know about. Food, electronics, critical medical supplies, cars, fuel, nearly all the world's essential imports and exports are at sea at any given time. The security of these goods and robust supply chain are vital for the functioning of modern society. A geopolitical conflict that threatens supply chain stability could threaten economic resilience around the world. Needless to say, developing countries and those developed countries that are now struggling, such as the United States and the EU, for example, may be impacted the most by any major disruptions in global supply chains. And as you can already tell based on the report that I just shared with you, there is a very high probability that this may become the case. Now, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate you joining me. I appreciate your time. Please remember to show your support. It truly goes a long way. Like, subscribe, and share. For exclusive content, make sure that you check out my alternative social media channels. You will find them linked in the description below. I certainly hope to see you there. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.